everybody, it's Paul here, and uh, I'm going to do something real quick that involves uh, shape keys of all things. As you can see, I'm in Blender 2.7, no, but this should work like in the slightly older versions of Blender 2. I'm just going to show you real quick, and the idea here is to use shape keys with imported wavefront objects. So, say I have a wavefront object, and I have a morph, morph version of that wavefront object, how do I get it into the shape key? And I'm sure this will apply to most other uh, importable formats, but object is the one I know of. I'm just going to show you real quick, this is a speaker model, I also have that blend swap now. so. It's just a generic speaker. And it's not really rigged or scripted or anything. I just got it on a animated driver, so it's just a random noise actually. <laughs> I'll show you real quick. And it's just adding a noise modifier to single keyframe, so it's not like I have a driver or anything specific to make it work with actual sound at this point. But all it really has is if I clear the keyframes. It just has a deform, which is what I'm talking about, shape keys, for up and down. And you're like, why didn't you just do this uh, change in Blender itself? And, well, one, I'm more familiar with Wings 3D, and two, I know how to use uh, magnet modifiers for moving and stuff, so I got a fairly realistic uh, deform of this speaker's cone. So it's from nearly flat to the normal dish shape. It's where if some people they just do it, it comes out kind of flat or weird, but magnet moves and wings are pretty cool, so I just use that to model two versions of the speaker. So, uh, talking about it, why don't I just show how to do it? Alright, so, let's go new, let's start up file, and delete this cube. So, first things first, we want to import our model, so... We want to import a wavefront. And I already have the path. I did this before, obviously. So, what we do is we import our loudspeaker. And in this case, this is the thing that's important. Is right here it says key vertex order, or vertex order. If you don't do that, your model could explode or do something goofy. Because, uh, as far as I know, Blender likes to uh, change meshes around if you don't click that. So, Make sure to have keep vertex order clicked, and I don't know polygroups matters that much. I think you have to break part of model anyways. So in this case, I'm going to port the speaker model, which is from Wings 3D. It can be from anything. It can be a 3DS, Maya, or whatever, Moto, or whatever you use. It doesn't matter. It's, in this case, it's just an object. But that, yeah, the keep vertex order is important. So let's import the object. So now we have our speaker, but as far as I can tell, it is all grouped together, yeah. It's all grouped together. So first things first, we want to break this apart, because the second model has only one piece. So let's break this apart. Go to edit mode. A, actually I think I want to have a, oops, not that. There. <laughs> yeah. Hold on a sec. Mesh display. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I should probably turn on my mouse actions, but it shouldn't matter too much. I hit P and buy loose parts. And that'll separate all the parts. Okay. So we want so object mode. So now when we go back and deselect, you can see that it is separate parts separate parts in the outliner and I should probably rename this real quick and all these oops that's a problem here <laughs> select the wrong thing I can uh, just like this. It's surround, right? So I can just hide the surround, hide loudspeaker, and if I just like these, I can join them. There. There, 
that simplifies it. Yeah, okay. So now that we have my separate parts, separate things again. And it matters too much. Model might not have to go through this step. So how do we get the morph in here? We do it the same way we did the first one. We got to import waveform. In this case, I named it as a morph. It can be called the form or whatever, but it's an altered version of the model. The key things is that it has to have the same number of vertices, and since you're exporting it from the same program, it should have the same vertex order. If you do anything to add faces or remove faces or anything like that to your mesh, all you want to do is move your vertices or edges around. You don't want to actually change your vertices or anything else in the mesh when you make them work because that will cause problems. And the vertex number, of course, like I said, has to be the exact same number. So once you do that, you... and of course this is a lighter file, but it only has the one part I'm going to do for them which comes from the same original model when I did it in weeks. Okay, so let's do that. Import. And now if we look at this one, uh, we'll hide the other stuff. So we have the speaker and the speaker morph. And as you can see, it's just the cone going in and out on the speaker. Something simple, but it's useful. So what we do is we go to... Uh, the object data bar here, and we see shape keys. There's nothing going on right here. So let's hide the morph. Make sure the loudspeaker is selected, and we want to add shape key. That'll give us our basis shape key. So that is our unaltered generic starting position. We don't need to edit that or do anything like that right now. So, how do we get our morph in here? So we more visible. We select it, and then we shift select to get our loudspeaker. So, wait. No, actually, it's the morph we want first. Just the morph, and then shift select to get the loudspeaker. There we go. And what they'll do is we'll make this selected, but this one will be selected and active. Just the important thing. The second thing is the thing that's active. So, you're like, how do I add this in here? I don't see anything to it. So we add another shape key, but to do that, instead of just hitting the plus, there's this little arrow here below it. If you don't realize what that does, you might miss it. So you gotta go to this arrow right here, click on that, and oh, see join as shapes? That's what you want. So let's click join as shapes. And then it brings in the extra shape key with the name of the thing you just joined. And I can actually hide this or I can just delete it. When I finished model I ended up deleting the extra morph part. But if you go click on the shape key now, have this highlighted, you can rename that speaker deform or whatever. And right now its value is zero which is the original default value which will be what the basis is. But if we drag it up to value 1, we can see it goes flat. So you can animate this with a driver or whatever, and you have a working speaker. And that can be done with the morphs for characters or anything else. So it doesn't have to be something like this. If you have a character uh, have their face change or whatever, some weird stuff with the make human characters, you can have their muscle shapes change or whatever and add uh, shape keys for that without having to figure out how to do it in Blender by bringing them in from other programs. Of course, knowing how to do it in Blender is great too, because then you can fix and adjust stuff. But Sometimes if it suits you faster to work outside and bring stuff in, you got to have that option, so I'm just showing you that option. Alright, have fun, people.